They say the best films are the ones you can watch on mute and still understand the story being presented. I don't know who they are, but they're not wrong. They also say you don't need to have a big budget to tell a big story. This time the they in the sentence is me, and I'm never wrong. In terms of franchises, 2023 was shaping up to be one of the most bland and boring box offices to date. Nothing seemed to stand out from its predecessors. Every sequel, prequel, and random spinoff seemed to make me question the existence of man and whether he should have been in charge of any kind of motion picture camera at all. The normal stuff that usually tends to bend the box office over and pull its hair wasn't working anymore. Car thieves turned spies, regular spies, superheroes, and uh, alien to our transbots all seem to be just as bored with themselves. Hollywood has lost any indication that they are enthusiastic about entertaining the masses and more hyped over protesting for a living wage. Hardly something most of them deserve. Uh, living nowadays is expensive, so we need, we need better living wages, better residuals, so that we can continue to live and care for our kids. If only somebody told Maiko that acting is not a viable and sustainable career to attempt to feed your family on. If I may be so bold and be the first to tell Maiko, you are not in the top 60% of actors. Whatever day job you quit to be an actor, beg them to bring you back on. You are not going to top the memorable role of Ben in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> So with the summer and fall film season filled with bloated budgets written by writers who don't deserve to be in writer's rooms, handing screenplays off to directors who don't seem to be thrilled about directing actors who think their total screen time of 4 minutes and 32 seconds means they get to pay off their mortgage all seemed lost. That was until a 70 year old giant Japanese lizard crashed through the wall, took his big scaly balls and teabagged everyone to death. <laughs> Godzilla Minus One has a budget of $15 million and kicks the sh** out of anything coming out of mainstream Hollywood these days. It is a film that cares about its characters just as much as it shows its audience a spectacle. Basically, this is not your American version of Godzilla with bloated budgets, weak storylines, and dialogue written in diarrhea all over the walls. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, man! We're in his mouth! We're in his mouth! <laughs> Godzilla Minus One is the 37th Godzilla movie in the Godzilla franchise and one hell of a sequel to Oppenheimer. At 70 years old, the giant lizard doesn't even look like it needs a facelift. In fact, he's never looked younger. Takashi Yamazaki crushes every department he leads with care, serving as the movie's writer, director, and visual effects supervisor. He was also the lead caterer on set. I can't find if this fact is indeed wrong, so that also means I can't be fact-checked either. Wow, winning. That's how you perceive it. It is the waning days of World War II when Koichi, a kamikaze pilot, decides that's not the best way to go about living a long and fruitful life. He fakes engine trouble and lands on a small island where there's a military outpost. Oh Koichi, you chose the wrong day to not fly your plane into American ships, because also landing on the island is Gozira. What Godzilla does next will completely shock you. He befriends all those on the island. He lets them slide down his back and they go wee all the way down his tail. He helps fix his Koichi's airplane engine and winks at him, indicating he knows that there's nothing really wrong with it, but he will never tell. He and Koichi hug and Godzilla returns back to the sea. See you later, alligator. Well, all that is a metaphor you take away from the scene, when in all actuality, he absolutely f***s this entire island up, killing everyone on it except for Koichi and one other survivor. Two years later after the bombs have been dropped and the war is over, Koichi returns to Tokyo to find his parents dead and their home ruined. What remains of the home, Koichi squats in with a girl he met named Noriko and an orphan child. They play house together for a while and are a struggling family as much as anyone else. Trying to make ends meet, Koichi takes a job detonating sea mines left over from the war. A job that sounds just as awesome as it does on paper. <laughs> That is, until the roided out radioactive Godzilla shows up and starts doing Godzilla shit again.
Godzilla Minus One does what other Godzilla movies in the franchise have failed to do in the past, and that was tell the human drama. I suspect the reason why Godzilla as a franchise has stood 70 years strong is due to the status of being cinema's largest metaphor for nuclear devastation. Mix that in with a powerful drama about survivor's guilt and PTSD in a post-war Japan setting makes for one of the better popcorn flicks to come out in the last decade. Parallels will be drawn to Jaws when Godzilla chases Koichi's Minesweeper boat, and rightfully so, but the parallels are much deeper than that. There is a real focus of attention to making sure the audience understands and relates to these characters. An art Western filmmakers and writers have seemed to purposely have lost, trading in character for pure spectacle. Much like Japan is unable to rebuild because of these twin devastations of the war and Godzilla, Koichi cannot seem to rebuild his psyche and allow himself to heal from his past. The guilt from failing his mission as a kamikaze pilot weighs him down like he's carrying this 400 pound midget on his shoulders. When the chance comes to take on another suicide mission, this time against Godzilla himself, he volunteers volunteers with the hope to atone for his sins. You don't have to have PTSD, survivor's guilt, or even been a kamikaze pilot to understand Koichi's determination to set things right. When Koichi thinks Naruko did not survive the attack, he is reset much like Japan is. The title Minus One has a dual meaning as well. Minus One marks itself as a prequel and, if the war reset Japan to zero, the attack of Godzilla minuses them by one. While Japan at large attempts to rebuild, Koichi attempts to rebuild himself. Godzilla Godzilla, while being the devastating dick of a lizard nobody wants in their lives, gives the entire country a sense of duty and purpose. The same goes for Koichi. With Godzilla Minus One, every penny is squeezed out of the $15 million budget. It puts Hollywood to shame in every embarrassing way possible. We used to make movies like this. Now the best we can do is make bloated pieces of corporate crap that don't look half as good for 10 times the amount of money. Darren? To see me. Western films are now written by people who only care about their titles and statuses in Hollywood rather than presenting the audience with the best experience possible. Movies assembled by numbers and data and marketing strategies and diversity and equity and inclusion councils. Rush jobs to push products out because with streaming services there's no incentive to make long-lasting films that are worth buying over and over again. The West is getting its ass kicked by countries who could care less about diversity quotas and pseudo-socio-political messaging. A sleep giant has been awakened, and it's starting to make its landfall on the shores of Hollywood. Toho Studios and Takashi Yamazaki have carefully crafted a well-thought-out and meaningful monster movie. They've taken the attention away from the king of the monsters and reframed it on the people who are affected. When people see themselves inside a character, or fully understand where the characters are coming from, they will return to that same story over and over again. Godzilla Minus One is a masterclass in how to make a popcorn movie work, and it might be the best Godzilla to date. It feels fresh because it's been some time since we got a movie quite like this, balancing a character piece with spectacle. Minus One is a movie that resets the franchise back to zero, paving the way for Godzilla to be stomping around for another 70 years to come. If you enjoyed this video, you go ahead and smash that like button. While you're done doing that, hit the subscribe button. And then after that, share this with your friends, family, people you hate. Maybe you don't like my content and just Want to waste somebody's time? Do it. Share it. Thank you. It is much appreciated. I'm out of here. I guarantee it'll go through Godzilla like crap through a goose.